Hey, JR, how are you, man? Welcome. I'm good, appreciate it. Thank you. How you doing? Good, good. Thanks for taking the time. Uh, of course. JR, if I could start kind of on a, uh, on a, a wide scope here and a little bit broad, just what have the, the last couple of weeks been like communicating with Rob Palenka and uh, with Frank Vogel and getting your – uh, getting you onto this squad, and then what's what's uh, what's the dialogue been like, and what they're asking and expecting of you? Um, and as you as you work yourself into shape, as Vogel said, he's been he's been impressed with how you've been able to keep yourself in shape these last couple of years. Um, I mean, for the last couple of weeks, I haven't really had too much dialogue. Uh, I try to keep myself uh, out of that and let my let my agent handle this handle the whole situation from uh, from not from being out for so long uh, for a while. It, I was just asking, 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 asking so much about teams and, you know, and, and trying to figure out what's, what was the next move and what was the next situation. And uh, I just got to the point to where it was like, I'm not going to ask anymore. I'm just, whenever they, whenever somebody calls, they'll call me and uh, I'm just going to keep my head down and keep working. So um, it wasn't really too much dialogue for me. Uh, since, I, since I've been here, though, they just want me to shoot the ball at a high level, defend and play the way I'm, you know, accustomed to playing. Um, obviously, I'm a little bit older, so. That takes uh, takes into uh, account, but at the same time, it's just just a lot of uh, getting getting to know some new faces. Um, more than anything, trying to get the uh, concepts down, what they want me to, to to do, and what they what their plans for me, and uh, just trying to figure out my way as I go. Okay, um, Bill Oram. Hey, Jr. Welcome. Appreciate it. I'm wondering what you think is going to be the challenge of trying to integrate with a new group um, when you know that you know, a couple weeks after you get on the court with them, finally it's going to be the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, what you need to be at a high level at that point. I'm curious what the challenge of that is going to be, and then also just how much um, reuniting with LeBron you think might might help with that process. Um, I mean, it's definitely going to be a challenge because obviously I haven't played with these guys. Uh, I haven't uh, been been around them as much. I watched. I obviously watched the games and been to a few games and seen them play, but it's different once you get out there knowing guys' tendencies, knowing guys going to cut or where they like to shoot the ball and stuff like that. So that's a little bit uh, different. But for me, it's fortunate because I've never been the guy to really try to set up guys anyway. That's pretty much Bron, and uh, it'll be AD's job. So uh, for me, it'll be, you know, get to the corners, space the floor, uh, play defense as much as possible, and uh, just try to stay out the way. All right, Tanya Ganguly. Hey, JR, Tanya from the LA Times. Hey, how you doing? Good. Um, I was curious, you know, you hear a lot about people talking about championship championship experience and what that means. Um, what do you think, from your personal experience, what do you think that means and how do you think it helps to have been through the process? Um, just, just being there before, uh, not being surprised by anything, uh, being able to uh, more, especially as you get older in your career, being able to to be vocal with your teammates and trying to get them to understand different certain situations in, in, in that crunch, trying to calm guys down because a lot of guys like to get too pumped up for the moment uh, sometimes and it kind of takes away from them. So uh, just as much as, as the experience goes on on the court, uh, being in the right situations, it comes on off the court as well. All righty. Dave McMenamin, please. Hey, JR, what's up, man? What's going on, man? You got a tan being out here in L.A., huh? That's, that's right, a little bit, a little bit of sun. Um, what conversation, if any, have you had or, or Rich had with um, the Lakers about next season? You know, there's only eight games here plus the playoffs. To, is there a possibility of this uh, extending into to next year? Is it an audition? Like, how are you looking at it? Um, for me, I just take it uh, – a day at a time, uh, literally a breath at a time, because I've been out for a while and being, being around and being in an environment is so uh, refreshing and uh, uh, much needed. So I, I don't really, I try not to focus on that part. I just try to take it day by day by day and enjoy the moment as much as I can. Um, because at the end of the day, I, w I was gone for a while, and for being somebody who's been around the league for predominantly most of their adult life. Uh, when you, when you when that's kind of like taken away from you, it kind of gives you that culture shock and what you, you know, obviously you don't really uh, understand what you've lost until it's gone. So for me, more than anything, I just want to appreciate the moment for, for what it is and whether it be next year or never again. I mean, I just want to uh, enjoy every uh, possible moment I get. Welcome back. Appreciate it. All right. Um, Kyle Goon, please. 
Hey, JR, Kyle from the Orange County Register. So, um, two parts. One, you, you got to work out with the Lakers, I believe, in late February, early March. Um, what did you kind of gather from that process, and and how has that connected to now you've been on the Lakers now? And, and then, two, um, was there a point where you were kind of reaching where you thought maybe your NBA career was over, given that you had been out so long? Um, yeah, well, the first part, when, when I when I first worked out with him, I knew, I kind of knew what to expect. Um, I kind of went watching, you know, Danny and KCP and uh, Avery, watching the way they play and the system is kind of, they kind of mirrored our system a little bit in Cleveland, obviously with Brian being a ball handler and, and creating plays and stuff like that. So <clears throat> from that aspect, I kind of knew what to expect. But um, for, I'm sorry, what was your second part of your question again? I just... I know you were working out and continuing to stay kind of in shape, but yeah. was there, were you reaching a threshold where you thought maybe um, your time in the NBA was over? Yeah, I, was, I went through a, a very depressed state uh, for a long time. Um, and it lasted for a few months where I just didn't, uh, I'm a big I'm a big video gamer and I didn't even want to play 2K anymore and it's just like I don't I don't want to hoop I don't want to work out I want to play 2K I don't want to do anything with basketball and it was just like uh, a depression because for something that I love and what I enjoy for so long is 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 for for my aspect uh, of going from playing at the highest level especially when you feel as though it's your career's you know not quote unquote over and still premature so. Uh, it was it was tough. It was extremely tough. But um, fortunately, I got a, a great foundation with my parents, and they just my dad has always been on me and on me and on me about what I uh, what I accomplished and what I still have left in the tank and stuff like that. So, fortunately for them, um, if it wasn't for them, it was it, 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 I'd probably still be in that situation. All right, we're gonna do a couple more questions, um, Lauren Jones. Hi, JR. Lauren Jones from the LA Sentinel. How you doing? Um, my question is about how you think the dynamics between you and LeBron and your history um, can kind of add value to this current situation and um, kind of getting you into the fold. Well, for me, firsthand, I know how LeBron can uh, get pissed at you and not know how to, people not know how to deal with it. Um, so uh, it, it, it gives that gap of, you know, understanding it's still all about uh, all about winning because I mean, as we all have seen in the MJ doc, people are so hard on MJ because he was so hard on his teammates and stuff like that. But when you got a case like LeBron, is the more it's different because obviously he's doing everything he wants to do to win and everything else, and it kind of comes off in a, in in a wrong way sometimes. And you need to bridge as a player to be able to go to the next player and be like, listen, man, there's nothing personal. It's whether 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 who who was right or who was wrong is just a good balance I think between myself and him because he knows just as well as he can challenge anybody else I'll challenge him and you know and it goes vice vice versa so when you get a, a person on that level it's it's kind of intimidating for a lot of people who don't know how to challenge authority uh, in, in in that quote unquote situation but um, that's one thing I've never really had a problem with so uh, talking to him and getting stuff like that. Uh, Get, having those tough conversations with our teammates, I think that's the biggest thing because that's the only way we grow as as men and as a team. Okay, um, Tanya from the Times had a follow up, Jr. So we're gonna give her a last question. Okay. Yeah, I was curious. You know, you're talking about um, being able to challenge LeBron. Um, how quickly did you feel comfortable doing that when you first started playing with him? And do you remember the first time you did it? Yeah, I mean, I've, from fortunately, I've. I've uh, I felt pretty comfortable with him because I've known him since I was in high school, and um, it was always for me. It was always mainly switching teams, like switching teams in in, in, in obviously not Miami and Cleveland, but it's like uh, it was practice. You know, you could be on Kevin Love and Kyrie's team, and you know y'all could blow the second unit out, but switch it over and go against everybody. You know, just little things like that, and it, it'll challenge him to the to point to where he'll get. Gets as as much as you think he he doesn't get a little sidetracked. It gets him reengaged to a new challenge for him to surpass. And for somebody at that level, you just got to create new challenges within themselves to keep pushing. Now, granted, he doesn't need me to make those challenges. He's already LeBron. But at the same time, it's just it's good to have when you have somebody who's quote unquote on your team and 
uh, a part of your circle to keep pushing you to be great.